oldest and strongest human emotion is fear. And the oldest and strongest type of fear is trepidation of the unknown. When we were children, our parents told us that monsters didn't exist. But we were sure that something was lurking under the bed or in the closet. Fear sees even if our eyes are closed. Welcome to the realm of the arcane. My name is Lon Strickler. Join me as I examine unexplained creatures, strange manifestations, and remarkable realities. Imagine this next hour as a voyage of discovery to strange lands, seeking not for new territory, but for new knowledge of the supernatural. Come on board as we begin this adventure together. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Arcane Radio, where we explore the unexplained here on the Paranormal King Radio Network. I'm your host, Lon Strickler, coming to you within a cannon shot of historic Gettysburg in the cryptid mecca of Pennsylvania. I thank you for joining me. Now, we're going to kind of get right into this tonight. Uh, so let me uh, read the bio on my guest. Tonight's guest on Arcane Radio is alien abductee and experiencer David Eckhart. Now, for over a decade, David and his family began to endure numerous abductions and close encounters in their home near Pensacola, Florida. The encounters have continued, though the activity has recently picked up in intensity. Now, David's ordeal has been thoroughly documented because of his determination to discover why he was chosen. I have assisted David in his journey since 2010. His story was presented on Factor Fake, the Paranormal Files, which resulted in one of the highest rated series episodes, namely because the team couldn't debunk, debunk David's claims. And by the way, this is the first time that I have publicly interviewed David. So, David, thanks for joining me. Hey, Lon, how you doing? Well, this is the first time we've been on together, and, uh, you know, we've known each other for a long time now. It's uh, right. it's been a lot going on from the very beginning. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> now, in, in the beginning, I know you moved to Pensacola from, uh, you're originally from Toledo, Ohio, and, of course, you were much younger back then. Can you describe your initial encounter with an alien being. Yeah, we, uh, me and a couple of friends, we, uh, went to one out in some, uh, um, woods out here in Gulf Breeze. Uh, the one guy that was with us, he was the native. He knew around the area really well. And, uh, he, uh, said, Hey, let's, let's, Let's go out here. We'll build a fire around this pond and stuff. There's some trails, and uh, so me and my buddy said, "Yeah, let's do it." So we went out there and sitting in the back seat of his car, and we's uh, in a Toyota Corolla, and uh, and we was just going through the trails and everything. And we parked over to the side, and and I seen this uh, light. It was going across the top of the trees, the pine trees, and uh, I was just kidding. I said, "Hey, guys, a UFO." And we started laughing and everything. I seen it, but it did look strange, but I was just kidding. I didn't know what the heck it was. He said, well, the pond's over here, and we'll cut through this trail here, and we'll build a fire and, and kick back. I said, okay, so we followed uh, our friend to the uh, woods there, and uh, we come upon the pond. It was real pretty. had an island in the middle of it and everything else. And uh, so we started gathering firewood, and, uh, and, and then uh, uh, we was... I was noticing there was a uh, light out in the woods, you know, and I kept mentioning that to uh, the friend we was with. And he said, well, dude, people come out here all the time. Don't don't worry about it. You know, I just thought it was kind of strange the way it was moving around. So, but as we was gathering the firewood, uh, this orb or, or light, which we was thinking was a flashlight, ended up to be something totally different than what it was. Uh it uh, uh, was getting real close after a while, and then uh, uh, let's see, it didn't. Yeah, we was 
took it up the wood and, and then I seen that spotted out and I was like, man, that is not somebody. And uh, this thing was uh, right over our heads and it flashed and it came down and it went really close to be uh, to me and my buddy. And I about fell back and, and he fell back and, and it went right back up to the trees and flashed and took off again. And he said, what was that? I said, I don't know, but it came so close to my head, I heard the whoosh of it. And, uh, um, it, it, yeah, then, uh, I said, we was discussing back and forth what the heck that was, and our, our other buddy, he was still getting wood, and so we went back and started getting more wood, Then I seen it again, so that's when I decided I was going to figure out what it was, so I took off running after this thing, so the wood all I had on was a pair of blue jeans and, uh, tennis shoes, no shirt, and I was just going through briars and everything else trying to catch up to this thing, and then I lost it. I looked around, and then uh, I happened just to look up, caught something in the corner of my eye, looked up, and I seen this flash. And, uh, you know, when it's, it's dark outside, you it's like somebody takes a picture of you, you lose your bearings. You know, you can't see nothing for a second, and then you get your vision back. Well, this thing was cruising through the woods. It was going between the trees like it was remote control. Yeah, so I took off after it again. And uh make a long story short, uh, I must have chased it probably about maybe 15, 20 minutes. Could have been up to 30. It, uh, things were happening pretty fast at that time. So uh, I was caught up to it a couple of other times, and I went to go jump down on it and couldn't jump right on it because I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And it just shoot back up and flash me in the eyes and take off again. Well, it ended up going into the pond. and. Uh, and it was pretty cool the way it happened. But and then my buddies called up to me and said, what's going on? He said, it's down there. So I grabbed a big stick and I was poking it in the water. And and, uh, and next thing you know, it, uh, uh, my buddy that was with, the native guy, he said, let's let's go. Let's go. I said, okay, let's find a way out. Heck, I didn't even know where I was at. So <laughs> I must have chased it for a while. But we tried to find a way back to the car. And uh, I got the closest look of this thing. So I was trying to describe what this thing looked like to these guys. And it must have been about maybe 25, 30 feet behind me. And then, uh, and all of a sudden, I just kind of looked up as I was, because I was looking at my hands while I was just trying to shape it out. And I've seen this uh, man or, or guy or whatever it was. I just, as soon as it saw me and I saw him and made eye contact, it just stopped. And then you get all these things going through your head. Because you're just seeing something that does not fit in. Now I'm thinking, is this a deer, an owl, or a, or a, a somebody with a mask on? And uh, and I barked out and yelled, and it took off uh, running. And so uh, I took off running after it, and I clearly could outrun it. I caught up to him really quick, real quick, and I could. I could smell them with the uh, wing just kind of breaking off of them. And I'm looking at the back of its head as I was running behind him. And it reminded me of uh, one of those little kids with the old man accelerated disease. Then uh, I, I just, I was thinking, man, I'm, I'm just scaring this thing, you know? So I started backing off a little bit. I couldn't, I couldn't tackle it, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Cause I didn't know what the heck it was. And, uh, and so, and, so I started backing off and it just kept on going and then went up around this bush and he was leaning into it as he was running. And then I really slowed down and then uh, my buddy Bob, he says, he says, where's he at? And he come up behind me and I said, go around the bush on the other side. And uh, so we went around this bush where it was like a little woody area. It's not one single bush, but he was gone. But everything I know now, he was probably still there. They got a cloaking ability. They can become invisible. So it's uh, sort of like a uh, we would think of like a uh, the predator. If you ever seen that movie, mm -hmm. the glass scene like uh, outline of it, right? And then it's pixelated. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, anyways, well, we took back off. We finally found our way back to the car and everything, and we took off. And I had dreams about that whole situation. I mean, that the, for about two weeks solid. I mean, it was like every scenario, I, I that even had dreams that I caught it, you know? So, but, uh, it's, uh, it really affected me pretty good, but well, we told everybody, you know, that, you know, we think we saw aliens and 
they're not green. <laughs> so, yeah. But I never gave it a second thought back then, you know. So, but but they're definitely not green. Some of them might be, but this yeah. one wasn't. <laughs> well, now but, uh, this uh, now that encounter that was your very first encounter with any type of uh, alien type being. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually almost the only. Uh, document. I was a little kid, and strange things happened when I was a little right. kid. I mean, and that, it seemed like there was Muppets uh, back then. You know, when I was thinking about, I was sleeping on top of my bunk bed when I was a little kid, and there was a thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kept hearing this knocking at the window, and it's going, "Dave, Dave, let me in!" And every time the lightning would flash, I could see this guy, and it looked like Ernie or something like that. Uh, not a good sight for a little kid, especially when you liked watching Sesame Street back then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I was thinking something like that because I, I, I that was real. That that was real when I was a little kid, and uh, uh, so but that's affected me when I was a little kid. But I was scared. Well, I was at the time. I was like, "Go away!" You know, I put my head underneath the covers. Go away! Go away! But uh, that's the only thing. I could remember something really strange like that could fit in when I was a little kid. And I must have been about oh, maybe four and a half yeah. uh, years old, maybe. Yeah. You know, I hear a lot of that from people um, that say like when they were younger, they, they kind of describe them as Muppet characters or something like that. I do get that a yeah. lot. Um, yeah. You know, th- now this is something I've never asked you before. Have any of your uh, parents or siblings have ever had any type of strange experiences like this? Um, you know, up in Ohio, uh, where I come from, there's a lot of uh, what you would call like witchcraft or uh, what would you call it, like paranormal stuff that people do, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, uh, and yeah, that cool. kind of, yeah, and, and that's the kind of stuff that was going on of uh, not directly that I was knew about, but I, I knew about, you know, some side stuff that people would do, but, uh, not directly that I, I could see, you know, I, I was involved with or anything like that. But we had like, uh, my mother had this woman that she talked to all the time. Her name was Thelma. She like, she claimed to die eight times on the operating table during heart surgery. And, and she could see spirits and uh, stuff like that. And uh, we go over her house, and it was a strange house, you know. But the woman was really nice. But uh, I think we brought something home one night with us. And uh, I think it was like an older man or something like that, spirit or entity like that. And he hung out at the house for, for a while. But my mom swore that she brought him back. So, but, I mean... You know, strange things would always happen, like spiritual stuff. My brother went out to the shed one time, and uh, my mom was on to him about cleaning it up or something like that. And uh, he was going out there, and he was upset and crying, and, and uh, he threw something in the shed, and, and all of a sudden, everything started coming down on top of him like that. And uh, and he ran back in the house, and he was scared to heck. You know, he was not going back out there to the shed again, you know, so... Mm. But uh, you, you said one of these things that you throw a baseball into and it bounces back to you. You know, you play catch with yourself. But uh, and that thing uh, flew in front of the door and blocked him. And so he was really quite shaken up about that. But that's uh, mm. I think I can remember what was going on back then. It could have been, you know, just a coincidence or just getting scared or whatever. I don't know. I was uh, I know I was in the house when it happened. But that's the one thing I can remember. Well, let's go forward now to uh, you're in Pensacola. You've got a family. You've got this house. Uh, and uh, these encounters start to begin. Can you kind of give us an idea how this started? Okay, yeah. It's, uh, it's You know, you you grow up and uh, you, you, you end up a part of your life where you think you got everything worked out. You know, it's like everything's running smooth and, and you got a family going and everything. And then uh, we ended up, I started a business and uh, it's doing really well, really good. There's lots of work, but, uh, and uh, it was out, out in uh, uh, this acreage of woods. It was like, this house was out in the middle of 17 acres and I had a pond to it and everything just beautiful house and uh mm-hmm. we was gonna uh 
and we had to sign on for it because they was going to develop all around it and everything. So we did that, and then, uh, and then you know, you hear you hear things going on in the house. You know, it's like you know, any house. You know, you hear like pipes creaking and popping and stuff like that. And and uh, at first, I wasn't around too much when uh, uh, we first moved in because I was I was running back and forth to Ohio and for weddings and running the business and everything else. My wife did all the moving and everything. So well, that was a blessing, but, uh, she, she kept telling me, you know, I'm hearing all these noises in the house and everything. I said, okay, no problem. It's like, and, uh, it's just water pipes or something, you know, it's like, so I didn't really investigate it. I didn't have time. I was running a business and, uh, mm-hmm. I just kept, uh, it kept bothering her and it started bothering the kids. And, and then, uh, you know, I just kept telling them to ignore it. You know, it's no big deal. And then, uh, uh, I come home one evening from work and, uh, I came into the back door and my wife, she was white as a ghost. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she says, David, seeing people walking through the house. And I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> so it's, uh, I said, just ignore it. I don't know what to tell her. You know, it's like, man, I, I, working all day, come home and I got to deal with this now, you know, mm-hmm. so, but, uh, she almost started crying and I said, okay, I'm going to have to figure out what's going on see if we're in danger or anything. Cause, and then, uh, so I started uh, doing research on maybe poltergeist and which I did not believe in the ghost and stuff like that, but I, I believe in stuff like that now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, definitely. And then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I it's really starting to sound like poltergeist, you know, everything I was reading and stuff. And uh, so uh, my wife uh, had this Polaroid camera and she would walk to the house taking pictures because the cats was reacting as well. So she'd take pictures around the cats and stuff and she's getting pictures and these orbs and stuff in the house, you know. Uh, you there? Yeah. Okay. And uh, and then, uh, uh, let me see, then... Uh, she get this one picture of this uh, older looking people looking into the window. It looked like, you know, flame boy in thirties or something like that. And, uh, and that, that caught my attention. I said, like, they look kind of messed up in it too, but uh, I still got that picture today. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the thing was, they was looking into a window that was two stories up in the air. It's so uh, I told her, okay, so let's see if we can do better. So uh, my son ended up getting a VHS camera, you know, back then, you know, that was top of the notch stuff. And, uh, and we started playing around with that, trying to catch stuff. And we was catching stuff on there. And, uh, and, but it always looked, you know, really grainy, you know, that's when, uh, uh, video was being caught by a magnetic tape. So it was not very good. And, uh, but you know that got my attention because we got a couple of good things on there, and uh, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna get me a better camera." So I forked out the money for this uh, uh, digital camera, a DVD. Put it, you know, mm-hmm. one of these miniature DVDs in, and then uh, that's when we started catching stuff, and I, I just tried to improve from there. I, I started running experiments, and and then uh, uh, we started catching some pretty good stuff on video. As a matter of fact. Uh, uh, one night, a uh, day, I was working about 9.30 in the morning. I was working out my pole barn, working on my truck. And I come in to go use the restroom in my bedroom. And then uh, right where my TV was sitting, it didn't even dawn on me, but it, it was like a hole. And, and uh, I looked down inside this hole, and they had these people down there getting ready for maybe a, a shot, too, or whatever. But the people that my wife got pictures of, that was in the window was down there dressed up from mm-hmm. the flame boy in thirties. And they had like cameras rolling around and a concrete floor with, uh, painted lines in the floor, people running around. I mean, entities, let's just say entities. Uh, uh, and they had setups of my rooms of my house down there, you know, with furniture and everything. So they was, I don't know. I'm like, they're not ghosts. That was the first thing that ran in my head. And they had me convinced that it was ghosts. I was so upset. I just started yelling that do not go to everybody. Everybody say, calm down, David. I said, do not go. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know what the hell it was from there. But uh, my wife is like, going, that's dimensional. It's got to be dimensional. I said, I don't, I don't know. But it, the weird thing was it didn't, I was so upset by it because I thought it was ghost. I didn't even dawn me that I was looking through a, a portal or a stargate 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that that was the kicker at the way. I said, wait a minute, that, how did I see that? You know, it's like, it was a poor little Stargate. So that that's when, you know, two and two started coming together about what was going on. Uh, but, so was this around then, the time, was this around the time that you had um, put the uh, video camera in the bedroom and caught that entity at the bathroom? Yeah, I had probably over two thousand hours worth of uh, videotapes, and uh, but I I try to walk away from that several times, and mm-hmm. uh, I burn everything. It's like it's just because it was eating up my time and everything else, and and uh, yeah, one morning I was getting up for work, and I run that video camera all night, and uh, and then it it was the uh, the uh, footage was corrupt on it. it, and it gave me an option to rebuild the lost data. So I, I just pushed the button and finished getting ready for work, and it was still and functioning, you know, working on it. So I said, well, I got to go to work. So I went to work, come back home from work that evening, and it was just finishing up. I said, okay, let's see what we got. So I grabbed the camera, took it into my office, plugged it into the computer, and uh, it was still blank all the way through. I mean, I, I went through uh, the whole thing. I had this uh, program called Win DVD number eight or something like that, and then... uh it gave me uh, an option where I could go frame by frame. A camera takes 30 frames a second, which is uh, kind of slow, but if you don't know how they, a camera works, which I didn't at the time, uh, I learned, but that, that is really slow, 30 frames a second. Well, all the way to the end, I, I seen this flash. And so, so I backed it up and, and go back and forth, and I thought I lost it, but then I caught it again. And then uh, so I narrowed it down, and then it came up with... Uh, about 15 frames in a half a second. So in a half a second, I got this thing that came out of the bedroom, uh, came out of the bathroom with the light on. I always left the light on because it shined light in the bedroom so I could, you know, see what's going on in there. And uh, and then this thing come out around the door and looks in the bedroom and turns off the bathroom light. It, it does turn off the bathroom light at the end. And uh, I said, I've got my son. I said, hey, come here, look at this. And he was looking at me, he's going, no way, you know Tears are coming to his eyes. He's about he's about fourteen uh, years old then, or fifteen, yeah. And uh, I said, this, "This is it." So uh, I, I sent it to uh, one guy, Mr. Burkhart, and that's about that time when that uh, uh, was that uh, Bigfoot was uh, out and being hoaxed and everything. And he's yeah, like, right, we'll, we'll 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 put it out there and. We'll see what uh, happens, you know, because I sent him frame by frame, and he put it in a little short video. But he, uh, yeah, then yeah, and that's the video I that I—that's the video you've been showing, and the video that I've been putting, I've been showing for several years now, which Correct. was uh, which was basically a couple frames put together that you were able to get off the videotape. Right, and yeah, and the rest of it was corrupted and, and still. And mm-hmm. So, but I was uh, I was I was lucky to get that. And yeah, that's what. That's what started the whole thing because that was like the clearest that I could I ever got, and then we just started from there. And uh, yeah, it's, well, uh, I, I I do know when you got the video, and you saw it, and then you've been and were encountering other things. You did contact right. Mufon in Florida, and right. they kind of re- rejected you, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they're like, what do you want us to do about it? I'm like, Absolutely. don't you have somebody come out and investigate this stuff? I said, don't you get any equipment or something like that? He said, let me show you something. He said, this is new fun. The guy pulls out some paperwork and throws it down in front of me. He said, all we do is take reports. I said, you kidding? I said, that's all we do. We take reports. I said, so I'll wait to my time. With you guys. Then I talked to uh, people that, you know, psychics and stuff like that, and people that were supposed to investigate the stuff. We couldn't get nobody to come out and investigate it. You know, I was, I was going to entertain them, you know, like, and, like, yeah. and uh, you know, shoot, they would, nobody would show up. It was like a waste of the time. I mean, it, the story sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm, I agree, but maybe I was too honest to be out. You know, it's like I should get some things to myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I know if somebody was telling me, I was like, I'd be like, this guy's out there, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> well, but, I, I know. In a, after a while, you, I had noticed that you had put the video up online and i noticed it and what happened was i contacted you i guess i called you 
I, I forget how we first. Yeah, you, yeah, you called me. I, I yeah, I call you, and you told me what was going on. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know what the hell to think because, um, I, you know, we, you I and I, I, I told you, look, Dave, I want you to keep in contact with me, keep, keep updated on what's going on. So what we did, we almost were talking every day. And right. uh, I mean, hours at a time sometimes. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really convinced of what was going on. And in fact, to be honest you, yeah. with you, for about six months, I thought maybe you had some type of uh, spirits or entities because you had right. mentioned to me that you had found some traps or something up in the attic. Right. And, and traps, it yeah. just didn't look right, you know. So I thought maybe that's what's going But you convinced me eventually that, yeah, this wasn't, these just weren't spirits. And uh, that's where we went. And then you started finding, uh, getting more evidence. Uh, let me answer me this. This is one thing that I get questioned about more than anything. And, and people okay. kind of question me about it. The way you take your video off a reflective surface. Explain to people why you do that. Okay. Yeah. That's uh Believe me, at first I did, I couldn't figure out why it was working in the beginning, but uh, it, you know, if you, if you have a little bit of science behind you, which uh, everything scientific to me, uh, electrons they reflect uh, like you, the only reason why you we can see each other is because there's electrons that's bouncing off of us and reproducing an image, you know, of us, so we can, you know, see each other. That's the only reason. But uh, and uh. These guys know our blind spots. And uh, for Victor review, if you take your thumb and put it out at arm's length out and you look at your thumbnail, that's about all you see. Your, your brain has to fill in all the rest of the blanking right there. So that's, that goes with everybody. I don't care who, what you think or whatever, but that's your view. That's your vision. It's about the size of your thumbnail with your arm all the way out. And your brain is putting everything together, even if it's got to lie to you. It's got to put a picture up for you. So, but uh, that's our blind spot. And these guys can do anything they want in a particular view. And uh, so, so by using, you know, arm with that knowledge there, and uh, you see, have a reflection and you can see because it's slowing down the speed of that electron that's producing an image of you uh, looking at it. It uh, produces a, a, a picture. So, a, a concave or, or a curved uh, reflective surface. It uh it it captures it and puts it a, a uh an image out so but it looks like cartoonish mm -hmm. a little bit aluminum aluminum works pretty good too of why I don't know why aluminum works really good but it's not even as reflective as uh, stainless steel but but it, that's NASA's using it to look at distant stars so if you accept that the pictures that you look at from the planets or other stars through NASA you can accept my pictures because right. uh. They know they know your blind spot, so they're going to use it. They know more about our psychology and everything else. On top of that, uh, you know, uh, you got a pareidolia, which uh, your brain produces a picture of of faces and hands and everything like that. They see faces. That's what it's it's good to do. It's a uh, it's designed to pick out people's faces. But now they're using uh, uh, squares and everything else with because they wear masks. And uh, you'll overlook them as well if you see squares, you know, instead of where the eyes are. And you'll, look, you'll go off right over it, and you won't even know that it's there because your brain's looking for round figures for your face. And they'll, they'll put a mask up that it'll be in blocks or squares and everything else like that. So you'll go off right over it. You won't even see them. You could have one standing right next to you. You won't even see the guy. But uh, so if they know that information, they've been around for a long time. I mean, this is uh, what they've been digging up to find out where our blind spots are, where our weaknesses are, and everything. So they've been they've been here messing with humankind for a while because they know a bunch of uh, psychology information, how the brain works, the human brain. So, uh, well, I'm, I, 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 I'm going to say right off the bat, I, this this one hour interview, we're going to definitely be doing some a series on this because there's just so much to talk. Oh about. yeah. Um, if you get down. Go ahead. If you get down. 
if you get down to the nuts and bolts of everything, it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a series. It would have to be a series because you will never be able to talk about it in one hour or even yeah. in a week. If you really yeah. want to get down to the nuts and bolts of everything, we, we can't cover a decade in in one hour. <laughs> That's right. That's so right. Let's Over go ahead a decade. And jump to the. Um, let's jump to the the first abduction. Uh, what okay. happened oh, yeah. and what these entities looked like and what they did. Okay. Yeah. And it's how we were. And, uh, and don't be afraid you know. to, to to. You know, if it gets graphic, don't be afraid to tell us because I've already told people. This could get somewhat graphic. Uh, right. Well, uh, I remember, uh, matter of fact, uh, I sent you uh, an audio what we were hearing. You hear the growling and everything mm-hmm. else like that. And uh, it was right around the same time that this happened. And uh, matter of fact, it was right around the same time as the entity that was floating up in the air that was on fact or fake as well. But I couldn't find out. I dissected that video. It's not floating in the air. It's standing there. Uh, it really is. It's a, and it's a female entity on top of that. But um, anyways, me and my wife laying in bed, and we we got to go through this stuff every night, all the noises and everything else and the growling. And and, uh, and I, I kind of uh, asked these guys that they was good or bad, you know, some of the first questions you ask, you know, to give us some kind of sign. Well, from... From about three seconds right after I asked that, uh, we got this humming, numbing, uh, vibration feeling and started at our toes. And, and uh, it's like I, I didn't know what was happening to her. I knew what was happening to me at that time. I'm like, and, it, and it started moving up through our legs and, and torso. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm feeling something. It's, yeah, me too. It's like, what is that? And, uh, and I started, started moving up through our arms and head all the way to the head. And, uh, and, but it felt good at the same time. And mm-hmm. I think, I think that they, they were using the, uh, the pineal gland for like near death experience. So you just kind of let go, you know, you, you, they're using your own body to drug you out so they can come in and do whatever they're going to do. And, uh, and so, and then as soon as that happened, with num- they come on in and big numbers and they, they brought some pretty big guys in. And they picked me up out of the bed, up underneath the armpits. Can you describe what they looked like? At that time, they were still uh, uh, invisible. Uh, you could see the like the predator uh, type. Uh, that, yeah, situation. the glass scene, like yeah, the cloaking. Yeah, yeah, they were still in that that position, but you could see them in, you know, and you could still see the the shapes of what was going on, but. Because these guys were pretty awesome size. They were reptilian, uh, they ended up being reptilian. And uh, they picked me up out of the bed, up underneath the armpits. And I'm like, me and my wife are still talking back and forth to each other while this is going on. And uh, uh, trying to stay awake. I feel like I'm going to fall asleep at any second. You know, like, I could talk to my teeth. You know, I was like, oh, my God, you didn't feel that? You know, I was like, yeah, I feel that. And then uh, they're, they're carrying us towards the TV set. To, and, and we walk right through a portal. And uh, and it was like pitch black when one inside. You couldn't tell what was up or down. I mean, it was like just pitch black. And we was going through there with armed guards as well. There was three of them on each side of us. And there was like a whole bunch of them. And they were surrounded everybody, the armed guards, as we was moving through this uh, portal. And then uh, up ahead in the distance, I'm looking up, and uh, I see like a doorway. It looked like a doorway with light coming through it. And... Uh, these guys seem to be pretty paranoid going through this place as well. So there's a realm in between uh, each realm, I guess. I don't know, buffer zone or whatever. And there's something going on in there that these guys are even scared of. Uh, so as we were traveling through there, we uh, came out into this opening. It was like daylight, and it was like a airplane hangar field. I could see like, like a half-moon building, you know, like you would have for an airplane. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you, could see, you could see all the concrete and everything. And there was some cubicles sitting off to the side. And uh, they walked us all the way up to that. I remember it was bright, too, man. It was bright. We walked inside this cubicle with, up underneath my armpits, out in front of this guy. And uh, we walked by this uh, reptilian doctor. I could see him now. He was wearing blue scrubs. You could see his eyes. You know, I knew he was reptilian because you could see the 
the uh, bumpy part or scaly part of his skin where his eyes wasn't covered up, but he had a uh, like a uh, cover over his mouth, like so he sanitary reasons. And this bed that folded out of the wall. The walls were like padded, and uh, there was a oval window. I could see light coming in, and they walked me right on past to the first doctor and went into uh, another room. And uh, there was like a uh, another bed that folded out of the wall, just opposite of the other one that uh, I came out of the room. And there was doctor that laid me down on the table. It was stainless steel. They sh- uh, swung over the light over my eyes, and uh, I could hear them talking and doing things, and then I was gone and out. And then the funny thing is, is uh, the next morning we woke up, we didn't even say anything to each other. We just, you know, routine, we was getting dressed and everything, and I got all the work, and it was a real quiet morning, and then I was driving to work, and got halfway there, and it's like, wow, that happened last night. Dude. What the heck? We didn't even talk about it, so I called up my wife, and I said, that happened? She goes, yeah, that, that did happen. And, she, and I was like, I was blown away that we didn't even talk about it. And then, uh, and and then uh, I, I had to go to work, and I couldn't concentrate all day at work. And I was like, I just couldn't wait to get home. And I got home, and we talked about it. And uh, she remembers everything I did. Uh, mm. But she was out. She didn't remember coming out towards the airplane field. She didn't make it through the uh, staying awake because you had to bite the side of your cheeks. You had to do everything you can to try to stay awake because these guys are good at it. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, But that's. She remembered all the way to that point and that she doesn't remember. So she don't remember seeing no doctor or anything or what they did to her. I don't remember anything about that. I just remember waking up and going to work the next day. And uh, But true story. <laughs> that was uh, the very first heavy-duty uh, abduction experience that I could remember. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was, that was uh, yeah, of course, they had the grades with them too. And, uh, and some other entities, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, I was just, in a world of wild as it was happening. So you don't catch everything. You just know you was being carried, you know, so uh, being manhandled. But, yeah, people was like, oh, can't you get any DNA or can't you do, you know, get some kind of evidence. It's like, let me tell you what, let me get you a syringe and you go get some DNA. I'll put you <laughs> on them. <laughs> so, yeah. I am not going to do nothing like that because they outnumber me and they got the best toys. So, yeah. Uh, so how many yeah, of I, them? How many of these reptilian? I mean, kind of describe the reptilians. Uh, okay. What overall what they looked like? Okay. Yeah. That's uh. They got we get the like uh, silverback ape looking reptilians. They got they got long arms. They're they're really beefy uh, upper part, and they got like a, a shorter legs, and they remind me of a silverback ape. Uh, they're built just like them, mm. and. Uh, they're like got a like a bumpy type toad skin, you know, mm. and uh, and they they do eat uh, raw rotten fish. How they do that? And then uh, uh, you get the reptilians that look like you know they're more like slender like this and uh, thinner. Uh, they got scales on their skin that people report seeing often. Uh, they they got a lot of good toys and and. And, you know, then you got these like Draco looking reptilians as well. But I don't see too many Draco like reptilians. Uh, I just see a lot of these uh, like renegade uh, type silverback looking reptilians. But uh, I've been abducted by by the scaly kind of looking reptilians. They look they look like uh, us, but they they're uh, like scaly, I guess. Uh, you can picture a human like that, and the face kind of protrudes out where their mouth is. Mm-hmm. I've gotten some uh, photos of them, uh, but you know they're, they're kind of grainy, and it's hard to catch. They do not want to be caught on video or film or anything like that. They act like they get in trouble for it, and uh, and and so it's hard to get them on video or even a, a picture of them, a good clear picture of them. I, I catch you know half of a face or anything like that on video, but. Uh, it did, and they get the really short looking kind of reptilians. They're like a worker species. They might have been genetically engineered because really don't see them doing too much of anything, but like being like slave labor for these guys. For the, yeah, like the, speaking uh, of that, I mean, I, I remember when you told me about that. Uh, now I know you, they had abducted you several times, and in oh, some yeah. occasions, it was almost like they were taking you on a tour. Yeah, uh, yeah. And can you kind of just, can you describe 
what you saw in the cavern uh, where they used the slave labor and what kind of beings were there. Okay, yeah, there was a, there was like a, a like a town or so up or anything. These were massive towing systems that I was in. Uh, you know, they would uh, when they would abduct us. Uh, sometimes they would wrap me up and my wife in this like yellow looking cellophane, like is maybe some kind of sanitary thing. But uh, I remember them uh, towing me out of the house and we get to our our spot before they would uh, you know unwrap us and and. Uh, and I would always sit there and try to observe what was going on. I didn't want them to really think I was awake and alert at that time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, uh, they would throw us around or they would walk us through. Cause I seen a lot of humans down there. It was like in the comatose state, but these caverns were, were huge. I mean, they're just, I just, unbelievably, at least some of them would look like part of the grand Canyon, but just tunneled out that like if the Grand Canyon had a lid on it. I mean, mm-hmm. someone was huge like that and they had like towns and unfinished uh, tunneling sections and they had trains down there. Uh, and, uh, it, yeah. And, and the, so in the rock on the side, they had like stores and stuff like that. And they're getting around with their kids and, and, and living down there and everything else. And, uh, I remember they came up to me and I was in this, uh, this like bubble looking thing. And they was all staring at me. I was like, God, I feel like a zoo animal. Mm-hmm. I didn't even have no damn clothes on. <laughs> you know, it was like, it's like, so, uh, and, uh, see, and then, and then uh, they taking me towards these uh, places, uh, walking down through there is, uh, some like, uh, look at like an archeological dig and stuff. And they had like a central building that was controlling everything and the lights that they had down there. It's like, there was, carefully removing it and looking for stuff like the archaeological digs and uh some places up underneath the water was uh pretty interesting too but it was like really wet down and dripping and then they had pumps running and uh and the water was like a domed over us i, I don't see like maybe a maybe it was a, a force field holding back the water or they could control it or, or whatever but uh there was like some ancient ruins down there that they was going through too so Mm. Uh, I had no, yeah, I do not and know exactly. I'm, I remember I was in an area where they had all this piping and, and pumps running and, and it was loud and stuff. And there was a human little girl down there and, and, and she was running around. She was all nasty and dirty and stuff. Uh, and I was trying to catch up with her, but she, you know, I, she ended up losing me, but yeah, they brought me in some rooms and, and, you know, debriefed me on some kind of stuff like that. And, I don't know exactly what my involvement was for that, but yeah, I, don't know, I was I was trying to figure out why they were showing me this stuff. I was like, it was they don't really talk to you unless they find it absolutely necessary. And I try to and talk they to do them communicate and, with you, right? Yes, yeah, they do. They, uh, they communicate with me, but they, it's not. It, it seems like they just give me bits and pieces of information, and uh, I get information from them just over listening to them talk. And yeah, they do. But speak you can't English, understand but, what they say. Uh, sometimes I can't, it, it all depends. Uh, but they do speak English. Yeah, they do. They do speak English. And, uh, I've, I've heard, you know, it's like people over in France and that have been abducted. They speak in the French language too. It's like, yeah. I don't, I, they're speaking English to me. So, yeah. so, and, and they're speaking to each other in English. So it's like maybe the language of the birds, you know, maybe it's a universal language, but, uh, yeah, you know, this a, now these caverns. Do you believe these are underground on Earth? I would, I would think so. But you know, in a, a Stargate portal, it's uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm believing that it is. But I, you know, I cannot tell you for sure. Hell, it could be on Mars, but the gravity felt like it does here. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, I've been in underground stuff like that. You know, when I was a kid. Uh, you, you know, you smell the dampness, so everything smelled the same, and and uh, atmosphere was the same. So, I'm assuming, yeah, it's it's been it was here on Earth uh, that they was doing the digs and stuff. So they're pretty much interested in like what we are interested in, you know, finding out our history, and maybe they're trying to find out their history or our history, uh, what happened. But these guys have been around for a long time, so it's hard telling. There's so many they operations also took going you on. To, uh... They also took you to an underwater facility as well, didn't they? It, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, 
yeah, they'd taken me there too. Uh, yeah. So, but they, they was doing like a, a underwater archaeological dig there too. And, uh, so, but then was pumping it out. Like, uh, I was saying earlier and, uh, I never figured out what they was looking for, but some of the stuff that I was looking at would look pretty cool. And it was like really damp and wet. Everything was wet. I just remember that. And it's like, I, I, I didn't feel comfortable there. I know that, yeah. but yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, I've been to some places that I don't know exactly what that. I've been to places where it felt like it was low gravity, mm-hmm. really low gravity. So I was guessing that it might have been on the moon. And this is, I've run across some information. This lady drew a picture of this building that I've been in, and she drew, uh, it was about me going to see a Council 5 or something like that. I don't even know. I didn't even see the Council 5, or maybe I did, and I didn't know who they were. But yeah. uh, she drew it. She drew it up exactly. I was standing by that table, and and uh, and and everybody. There's a bunch of people, and it was either really dusty in there or smoky. I I couldn't really figure that one out. I think it was dusty, but uh, and everybody was talking all at one time. And there was there was these monkeys that came up. that looked like monkeys. I was like the Planet of the Apes, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. and uh, they're talking to these guys, and uh, and I'm like, they're talking to these guys, but they're not paying attention to me what i'm saying you know like I, I was getting offended by it and uh nobody could understand what they were saying and then one of these great entity uh beings came up and put this wand up against the monkey's head and then everybody in the whole room could understand what he was he was uh saying so uh except for me i i didn't have that luxury but i just remember that these guys they have clothes on and everything and they're talking to them and they wasn't talking to me and uh but I, I was in that building. I was in that room. And yes, it was like microgravity. It's not gravity like it is here. But that's why I'm thinking it might have been on the moon. But I think the moon's a way more different than what. Oh, it is. I, I, I believe that, too. You know, I've heard way too many, many um, experiencers tell me about uh, going to the moon, either through a portal or some type of craft and such. I had a lost time experience myself where i know i was taken to the moon the earth right. moon. I, so yeah you, uh, just, you just know it <laughs> so yeah there's something there's something there i mean it you know this council of five thing has been coming up to me recently uh when you showed me that drawing i was almost positive that what you told me was true that something had been going on there and I had no doubt that you had experienced that as well. But see, that's something else I got to look into. I'm really not sure on that. And that's just more that's just more research I've got to do. I know you you poor guy, you're you're you taking on so many cases and stuff, but right? you're <laughs> you're on it. Wow. I don't know how you keep up, especially with the stuff we talk about. Yeah. So Oh man, I yeah. You know. Uh, well, like, you know, I like I said, down. you know, I'm, I'm kind of in this hour, this show, we're kind of going to gloss over and do a little here, little there to give people an idea of what you went through. And then if we do further shows, we'll get into more detail. But the one thing I did want to ask you, uh, and, you know, you've t- you and I've talked about this, but they did they did do a, 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 a surgical procedure on you, didn't they? Right, yeah, my uh, I was having uh, problems with my bones and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, I was going back and forth to the doctor, getting protozone shots, and uh, and she's like, David, I need to talk to you. I said, Yeah, he so, said, so you, you more than likely have this rheumatoid arthritis, you know, that it's and I, I don't wish it on nobody because it's like mm-hmm. the worst kind of arthritis a person can have. It's like an autoimmune disease where your body attacks itself and and deteriorate you, you know, from the inside out. And it's uh, not cool at all. But, uh, yeah, I was like, I don't, and she says, you're going to end up in a wheelchair. She says, uh, you, you need to quit work. I said, I, yeah, I see that happening. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. But, uh, right, so, and then, uh, you know, it's like, so, uh, it, it kind of got me down and everything, but I figured I was going to try to beat it anyway. Then it goes into remission, you know, sometimes for uh, seven years and it comes back and, and everything else like that. But, well, I was having a lot of inductions and, and, and I was, uh, I would lay there in bed at night pretending I was uh, asleep, you know, just 
so I get as much information as I could. And I was listening to him talk. And this one entity, he, he kept bringing uh, people in or, or entity, other entities. I call, we always call them people. But, uh, and they would talk about my situation and, and that, what kind of person I was and everything else. And, and uh, he was like selling off the idea of something about me. And I didn't know what they was doing or, or anything like that. And, and, uh, and I was, you know, telling my wife, you know, it's like, something's going to happen. I, I just know, it. I don't know what they're doing, Gene, but they're, they're, something's going to happen. So the, they might end up taking me out because every time they take you out of the house, you don't know if you're coming back. That, that's, yeah. the, that's the spooky part. Because and, the one, really and, don't know and, you, and you know that by experience because you know of people that never did come back. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. You getting could, that another time. Right. Well, they, they had this dummy of me, uh, I, a, a clone or whatever. And they would sit next to the portal on, on the other side of the Stargate. And he was always like in the comatose state. So I, I kind of wondered if they would put him in the bed when they would take me out. Cause they didn't always take my wife out yeah. uh, or my kid. Uh, so I was like, maybe they stuffed him into the bed. And so she wakes up, um, she sees something there, you know? So, uh, that's what was going on. Well, Right about the last time that this uh, entity uh, brought somebody in, and, and I guess he was the guy, the money guy or whatever, uh, and he says, okay, uh, do it. And it's like, do what? You know, it's like, well, I ended up spending about a, a week's worth of surgery, and they was disassembling me section by section, legs and feet, and uh, I mean, just cutting the flesh away and, and putting it on trays and carrying it away, and and uh, it was a major procedure, and, and they breaking the bones and and sawing and cutting, and I'm like, oh my god, what the heck? You can see smell the bone dust in the air and uh, and the light you can see above you, and and then I would sit up and I'd be looking at it, and they'd have music playing in the background. These doctors would while they were doing all this stuff, and I was like, cool. So I get to watch what's going on, and uh, I was kind of disconnected from the surgery part of itself because I couldn't feel it, but I could feel the pressure and them twisting my body around and breaking bones and and cutting and, uh, and refitting, uh, you know, new joints and everything up in me. And it's like, I did not understand what was going on. But, uh, mm. and then at the end of the, each night of the surgery, uh, they, you know, they put me all back together again. And it was like, what time he's got to be at the work and all this stuff. And, uh, so they'd be running out of time. They'd be hurrying, you know, right to, up to the last second. And then, uh, for the last procedure part, once they got you put back together, uh, they would dump this like, a uh, clear grayish looking liquid on you on, that was in the speaker. They dump it on your leg, you know, whatever they was working on. And then, uh, and then it, the body would just start healing. I don't know if it had nanotechnology in it or what, but magical water, I don't know. But, uh, uh, but you know, my leg would be like bright red and, and everything. I'd be getting dressed for work. And it's like, I know something happened, but I didn't know what they did, but, uh, get to work and about halfway through the day, about lunchtime, my legs start looking better. By the time I made it home again, it was like normal again. But uh, I could describe in detail exactly how they was doing this surgery. But uh, well, a time is an issue, I know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to uh, get into that at another time because I, right. I really do want to do this in a little more detail. Now, I, one more thing I did want to cover today, uh, and it's something I have talked about recently to people is that you observed human beings being experimented on and disposed of. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that, okay, I, I can talk about that one, too. Uh, hey, yeah, you know, there's something I'd never talk about, but because uh, it's not my job to tell everybody, but, uh, uh, but yeah, this is, I can talk about uh, the situation here. I was, being, I was abducted, okay, they they taken me out of the house, and, uh, and uh, uh, I was, looking at some of their inner structure and I was getting upset because these are like mundane things that we have, you know, here like tiles, doorways, you know, you push the handle on the door. We had them in the school buildings, you know, you had double doors and you push the, the latch on the bottom and it goes all the way across the door and the mm. door opens. And, and I was getting terribly upset about all this. They brought me into this room and it was all tile ceiling floor. And it was like a, a, a drain on the floor and there was a one stainless steel bed and they laid me down on it and then they, they left the room. I'm laying on the stainless steel table. I'm like looking at the towel and the window and everything. I kept seeing these colors going by the window 
And uh, I said, what the heck is that? And I just kept going by the window. So I'm looking over, and, and uh, uh, I knew there was uh, some reptilian doctors on the other side of the door because they kept peeking in on me. But I thought my curiosity got the best of me, so I eased myself off the table, and I walked across the room and, and looked out this window. And it was like, this. I think this was on the moon as well because it was like low gravity. And uh, and I was looking out the window, and, and the colors, I'm looking at it, and then everything started coming into focus, and Said, these are bodies there was human bodies falling off the, they were like being pushed or whatever off of it. and i look up the window and it was like another ledge up above where out the room i was at and it was all dressed up in like these corduroys flannel shirts and like hand-me-down clothing uh and it was uh some of the you know people they were skinny didn't look real healthy but uh and and then as the bodies were falling these things were coming out of the wall it looked like uh electrical coils you know you you would run conduit of electrical wires in and it was jabbing them on each side of the leg these bodies that were falling down and it was vacuum all the fluid out of them really quick so they looked like a mummy by the time it was going by my window with their clothes on and, and it was falling to the floor then this big thing on the ceiling it was like a half moon shape and it was silver and it would vacuum up these big piles of bodies and suck it all the way up and then move all the way across. And there was these burners down there, uh, a wall just full of burners, huge burners. And these little short reptilian guys are down there working their butt off, picking these things up, these bodies, and tossing them into these burners. Uh, and, and it's like, and I was always speculating that maybe why are these people being killed? Why are they dying? And it's like, am I next? Am I part of this? Because I'm looking at this and, and they're just right above me. <laughs> it's like the room above me or a ledge or up there. I'm starting to think maybe I'm not going back home this time. So, uh, but they ended up uh, bringing my wife in and, and dropped her on the floor over in a corner and stuff. And uh, and I ran over and jumped up on the bed and uh, nobody said anything to me. And then the uh, doctors came on into the room. I'm like, oh, this is it. This is... <laughs> not going back home, you know, then I don't remember anything after that until the next day, you know, uh, like halfway through the day. I always remember it always like halfway through the next day. I go there awake, come back asleep most of the time. I, I have yeah. run out of a Stargate before. Uh, I have, yeah, definitely ran out of a Stargate right back into my own bedroom. And, uh, and that, that's when, uh, they was taking me out, wheeling me down on this, uh, dolly. Or, or a gurney with his bed with the wheels on it and it was going down like in this tunnel and then uh there was a female reptilian that was trying to get a uh, device or something out of this guy's back and and she was very evasive she they very evasive she stuck her fingers inside his back and and uh stuck her hand in there and uh pulled something out and she says i got it i'm going hell no I rolled off that gurney and I was going back the same way I came in. I was running. And so, uh, then I came right back into my bedroom. I spun around and, uh, I was waiting for him to come through. Nobody came through, but, uh, <laughs> it was like, that was too, too much for me. So I wasn't yeah. want to be part of that. So, uh, yeah, well, I tell you, you know, for all the, all the years we, you know, for about two years there, you and I were talking almost every day. And right. some of the, some of these accounts that you have given me, <clears throat> but the bottom well the bottom line is for whatever reason you were given an opportunity to see this stuff and they trusted you and in fact right. they used to talk to you about me because they knew that you were talking to me right. i had some encounters after it here at home when i was at home so I know they knew about, about that. yeah yeah it's uh i don't I don't know uh, exactly what the whole aspect of what my part of the play is or, or your part of the play yeah. uh, for uh, reporting it. Uh, you know, I think it's it's like two points of time coming together uh, and it, it's doomed to meet together. So uh, <laughs> these guys, it might end up being part of disclosure one day. Uh, but, you know, I, I sent you that picture the other day. Is at Heritage House. You know, it's like, what is is there something part in the future? Are these guys in the future know what or what? You know? that, that, you know. That's the strangest thing. Let, let me tell people real quick. You, you sent this photograph to me where the, in light, it, this type of, uh, it looked like a, like a light had. Blue light, yeah. Yeah, projected this words, Heritage House on a table. 
but you couldn't tell where it was coming from. Right, right. And there was a there was also a shadow of an individual there too, that you right. didn't know it, it wasn't your shadow. It was coming from somewhere right. else. You know, the you know when and when we get back to talking at another time, we're going to start going into more of what has been going on recently. Uh, you may have seen or been introduced to uh, a one of your hybrid children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, get, these new yeah. entities that you're seeing are entirely different than the ones you used to see. But we'll go right. a little more into everything. Uh, yeah. it, it's a fascinating. It's a fascinating story. There's so much that we aren't able to cover in one hour. But I promise everybody, and it's up to you, Dave, if you don't mind coming back, that we'll get into this a little more deeply. The, the next yeah. couple of times we can do this. Is that fine with you? Yeah, well, just, yeah, yeah, because we're just glossing over. Oh. I mean, speed demon popping, uh, trying to get to, through this uh, really quick. <laughs> but, yeah, there's so much detail that you, you miss the details. That it's like it's hard to really put the whole thing together. So, you yeah. Know, but, uh, you know, I wanted to give everybody kind of an overview tonight of what had happened in the beginning, what was going on. And some of the really unbelievable, remarkable things that you witnessed. But I, I think out of all this, we can say to a certain degree of fact that some people that, who, that are abducted don't come back because they're used as slaves. They're used for experiments right. and, and whatever else they use them for. What is it like? Two hundred fifty thousand children go missing every single year, vanish off the planet without a trace. I think it's, it's something a, like that. It's a lot. Yeah, that's a huge number. How do you miss that many children? I mean, it's like, what? How come nobody talks about it? You know, it's yeah. like, but that's what blows my mind. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's people and, and human mutilations. They got those too. You know, the yeah. scary stuff. <laughs> so. Well, well, we're going to go deeper into that. Uh, you know, maybe in uh, several weeks we'll pl we'll uh, plan something for you to come back on. By that time, I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions for you after listening to right. this this show. So I like um, really good questions. <laughs> so, yeah. so, David, yeah, thanks really again for being on the show, and thanks, uh, uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, as always, Lon, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, giving me the opportunity. Okay. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. So listeners can show their support for Arcane Radio by becoming a patron. Simply go to famsandmonsters.com and click the Podbean patron banner. Arcane Radio also accepts direct donations. Now, if you have an unexplained encounter sighting, feel free to contact me through the Fams of Monsters blog site. Now, I want to thank David Ecker for joining me this evening. Uh, this was just the first in what I hope to do several shows about David and his ordeal. Uh, David will be a, a part of the, my upcoming book, and uh, but we're going to go through as much as possible to let people know what is really going on. So I want to thank you for listening to the show. Good night and have a safe and enjoyable weekend.